Now let's talk about how moving the center of gravity around will change the stability of an aircraft. First of all, most airplanes are designed so that the center of pressure is right about here, but the center of gravity is ahead of the center of pressure. Now take a look at this. Think about this in your mind. Pick this airplane up with a string at the center of pressure. Now notice where the center of gravity is. It's ahead of it. What's going to happen? The airplane's going to nose down. Most airplanes are designed so that, particularly little airplanes, are designed so that the center of gravity is ahead of the center of pressure. And so therefore, the airplane would nose down except for one thing. And that thing is that there is an aerodynamic downforce on the tail. In most little airplanes, the tail is actually trying to fly down. Now the reason for that is that aerodynamic downforce on the tail and the fact that the center of weight is ahead of the center of lift makes the airplane stable as far as pitch and speed are concerned. Let me give you an example. Let's assume you're flying along. And for some reason, the airplane gets disturbed by an air current, the nose goes down, the airplane dives and picks up speed. Well, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen as the airplane picks up speed, there will be more downforce on the tail. The tail will come down, the nose will come up, and the airplane will return to its original position. The fact that the center of gravity is ahead of the center of lift means that you have to have a downforce on the tail, and that downforce on the tail makes the airplane stable as far as speed and pitch are concerned. Now let's get the airplane just a little bit too slow. For instance, you, the nose goes up, the airplane climbs, gets a little too slow because you got caught in the temporary wind current that caused that to happen. Now as the airplane gets too slow, now you have less downforce on the tail, the tail will come up, the nose will come down, the airplane will dive and return to its original speed. So as you have more uh, downforce on the tail, the airplane becomes more and more stable. Now, and what causes the downforce on the tail? The fact that there's a difference between where the center of lift is, or center of pressure is, and the center of gravity is. Now, you really can't change the center of pressure a whole lot in an aircraft because it's pretty much designed into the shape of the wing. But can you change the center of gravity? Sure you can. Just put your mother-in-law in the back seat of the aircraft. That'll change the center of gravity. And now you've changed where the center of gravity is located. Or blow bricks in the baggage compartment if you want to. You can change the center of gravity of an aircraft. So now you can move the center of gravity around. What happens if you move the center of gravity aft, further rearward? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Does the plane become more or less stable? Well, as the center of gravity moves aft, the airplane becomes less stable because there's less downforce on the tail, and as a result of that, less controllable. So compared with an airplane loaded with the CG at the forward limit, an airplane loaded with the CG at the aft limit will be less stable, but what's gonna to happen to the stalling speed? Well, it'll have a lower stalling speed because if there's less downforce on the tail, the wings have to support less weight. So when you move the CG rearward, you lower the stalling speed. And in fact, you have a higher cruise speed because this downforce on the tail and the lift required to support it caused drag. So if you move the CG rearward, the plane actually flies at a slower speed, cruises at a higher speed, but the trade-off is it's less stable. There was actually an, an employee for United Airlines who won something like $5,000 by putting a note in the suggestion box by uh, saying, and the note said, let's load all the aircraft as far aft as we can because the airplane is more efficient. It has less drag, a higher cruise speed, a lower stall speed. But the trade-off is the airplane is less stable. You have the least stability. So as the CG is moved rearward, recovery from stall becomes progressively difficult because what happens the airplane tends to fall tail first and you have difficulty getting the nose down for recovery from the stall. I will never ever stall an airplane that's out of the CG limit again. It's horrible. It's a hard time getting the nose down to recover from the stall. So if the airplane is loaded with the CG aft of the aft limit, spin and stall recovery may become difficult or impossible because if the center of gravity is too far aft, a flat spin may develop. Now if you move the center of gravity very far back, you could get to the point where you have the center of gravity behind the center of pressure. 
And that is a very bad deal indeed because now you have the center of pressure forward of the center of gravity and the aircraft would have an inherent tendency to nose up and an also an inherent tendency to enter a stall. It would be very difficult. The airplane would want to keep slowing down and stall itself all the time. So as you move the center of gravity rearward, the stall speed becomes slower, but the airplane becomes less stable and more efficient. On the other hand, if you move the center of gravity forward, then the airplane becomes much more stable, but much less efficient. And also, it's difficult to land an airplane when you move the center of gravity forward because it's difficult to get the nose wheel up for landing and the tail down. So forward CG is most critical on landing the aircraft. Now, if you have the CG at the forward limit, then you have an additional download imposed on the horizontal stabilizer. And that produces an additional load that the wings do have to support, so the airplane is less efficient. If the CG is at the most forward allowable position, and let's assume you maintain constant power and altitude, what's going to happen to your indicated airspeed? Well, the answer is indicated airspeed will be less when you have the CG forward because the airplane is less efficient. You have to support that down force on the tail with lift from the wings, and the airplane is less efficient. When is the CG going to affect stalling speed the most? Well, if you have it very far forward with a high CG, uh, high gross weight, CG furthest forward, your stalling speed will be the highest because the wings have to support the most weight. So when the CG is moved, we'll say for instance from the aft limit to the forward limit, and you have a forward CG, the cruising speed of the aircraft will decrease because the airplane is less efficient, it's supporting more weight really, and stall speed will increase. And finally, if you exceed the forward CG limit of the aircraft, the aircraft will have a much higher stalling speed, but if you did exceed the forward CG, what would happen to the aircraft's longitudinal stability? And the answer is it would increase because you would have less pitching. Longitudinal stability is pitching stability of the aircraft. So once again, a forward CG gives you more stability but less efficiency. And an aft CG gives you more efficiency but less stability. There is an obvious trade-off between stability and efficiency.